supposed to, to understand. Paul was writing to Timothy, and Paul was writing about people that were in the church. This wasn't about some people. Paul was explaining to Timothy, there's folks like this, and in, 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 they gather together in houses of worship. <coughs> So we are we in these days? Of course we are. And it's just going to continue so. So this series of sermons that, that's on my heart to bring and, and to teach. It's going to be some preaching, but there's going to be some teaching in this too. And it's basically this. That we need to learn how to receive from the Lord what He has provided for us through the gift of the Spirit of, of discerning, of, of listening, of hearing and responding. It's the spirit of revelation. Yeah. The spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom. So look with me. Oh, well, you can write these down. I'm going to go through about four scriptures real quick. Proverbs 4 7 says this Wisdom is supreme. So get wisdom. And whatever else you get, get understanding with it. Wisdom is incredibly necessary. Isaiah 11, 2 says this. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. So who are we talking about? Holy Spirit. Would you say Holy Spirit? The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. A spirit of wisdom and understanding. A spirit of counsel and strength. A spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So we're talking about the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit brings this to us. It brings us counsel. It brings us wisdom. It brings us understanding. It brings us strength. And it brings us the, the understanding that we need to be fearing the Lord. Now, is that a phrase that God's going to come strike you with a lightning bolt? Well, it could happen. And I've, I've known some folks in the past, none of you, but I've known some folks in the past that it would have helped. And God can do those kind of things, but it's not that kind of fear of the Lord. It's the fear of being without the Lord. It's the fear of being on a path where God is not there to help. That kind of fear. <clears throat> and so, again, Proverbs 9 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So we have all of these scriptures to support this need, this truth, that we need revelation. We absolutely do. So turn now with me to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. In chapter 1, we're going to begin reading verse 15. And it says there, This is why, since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I never stop giving thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. Paul is writing to these believers in the church of Ephesus and he's saying, when I think of you, I pray for you. You know, I pray for every one of you every Sunday morning before I get here. I start praying early. And in Paul goes on verse 17, this is part of the prayer. This is what Paul was praying. First of all, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's, let's get the perspective here. Peter, Gentile over here, to my left, he does such a, a really good job of always reminding us everything always starts with God. Amen? It starts at, it starts at the throne of God. It starts from the Father's heart. And in this prayer, do you see Paul right here praying for us, he's praying, he says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give unto you the Spirit. Pause right here for a second. Right here we already have. We got the Father. We got the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son. We've got the Spirit. We've got the Trinity right here. Paul is praying the Trinity complete involvement. And look what it said. That he would give you the spirit of wisdom and understanding and the knowledge of him. Now, who would be the him? Who's the him? The Father. Paul is saying to these 
Christians in Ephesus, I pray that the Father would give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of who he is. So, obviously, y'all know something. You can do enough to set your clock ahead and get down here on a Sunday morning and come into the presence of the Lord and be a part of the church of the living God. You know something. But we're always growing and we're always going deeper and we're always seeking and searching for a greater, more full and complete knowledge and understanding of the Father, the God of heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the work of the Holy Spirit. We're always searching for those things. Paul is praying that we receive those things. And so he goes on in verse 18, he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart might be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, whose calling, go back to the Father. Know the hope of the Father's calling. What is the, the wealth of his glorious inheritance, the Father's inheritance for you? Paul prayed, I, I, I pray that you know when you, you grow and you get deeper and greater understanding of all that God has for his children in the inheritance of the saints, 15 and 19, and what is the immeasurable greatness of the Father's power, his power, toward us who believe according to the working of the Father's strength, the Father's mighty power. So Paul is praying all of these things, but the first thing he prayed in order for us to go deeper and get to that place, he prayed for discernment, and understanding. He prayed for revelation and understanding. If ever before, and it's always been needed, but if ever before, the need for the church to be able to receive the revelation of God and to understand the revelation of God, it's in, it's in the calendar of humanity that we're at now. And what a blessed place to be. This is not a time to be afraid. This is a time to be very confident. This is a time for the church to stand up. This is a time for the church to declare that we know the Lord. And He has us. Um, I've often wondered about the disciples and those that followed Jesus and saw His mighty works and, and were there with the fish and the bread and, and the healings and, and casting out the evil ones and all of those things that Jesus was seen by those eyes that, that saw Him do. But the beloved, the scripture says this, greater works shall we do. And I really believe that the church is fixing to get revved up and start hitting on all eight cylinders and we're fixing to see God do some amazing things because there's a harvest coming. I believe that the mercy and the grace of God is going to sweep through this land and we're going to see your, your friends, your loved ones, your family, those, we're going, to see, we're going to see your enemy get saved. And you're going to shout hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And you're going to shout hallelujah when your enemy gets saved. Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> you were sitting there thinking, which one? Which one is your problem? <laughs> but I believe we're going to see the Lord do something mighty. And you know who he's going to use to do it? He's going to use you. And you know how he's going to be able to use you? Because you're going to get the revelation from the Lord God Almighty through the power of His Spirit. Go do this now. Say this to them. Praise God. Or you may be standing in front of them and they spout off something dumb or ignorant and, and you're sitting there going, Lord, I don't have hand this. I don't have this. And whoops. I just got a revelation from God. I know exactly what to say. <coughs> These days are coming. They're going to be glorious, great days. They're going to be days whenever we can't wait to get back to the house of God on Sunday so we can brag on Jesus. And just all that he is and all that he's doing in these days. But church, we've got to move forward in learning to discern. Amen. Amen. And so all of this that the Father has, I want to read to you Psalms 119, two verses, 98 through 100, three verses actually. So listen to this. Just listen to this. Your command. Well, your command, that would be what? His word? That would be his word. Your command makes me wiser than my enemies. 
For it, his command, the word of God, his word, is always with me. Yeah. We're going to have to learn to understand. The word is in you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. Verse 99. I have, I have more insight than all of my teachers because your decrees, your words, are my meditation. I'm always thinking about your word, Lord. Your word is always in my thoughts and my mind. And, and my enemies and, and those deceivers, Lord, you've got a word for them. You've got a word. And what's going to come through me? I don't know what it is right now, but when the time comes, I don't know what it is. We're going to get there. Amen? We're going to get there. Verse 100 says, I understand more than, than the elders because I obey your precepts. I obey your word, Lord. I understand, those that have gone, I understand more than those that have gone out in front of me. Now, that's not making a braggadocious statement. It's just saying that I'm living in a time when we're all going to have to have this. Amen? And so, here we go, church. Here we go. Now, I want you to flip over to 2 Peter. Turn with me to 2 Peter. You might want to get a pencil or something marking your description because I'm fixing to show you some, some incredible promises and, and one that's just going to blow, blow you away. You may already have, have you may already have some more. But in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 it starts. His divine power. His, who's that? His divine power. It's God. We we'll start with God. We always start with God. We always start with the Father. His divine power has given us everything required for life. Say amen. amen. He's given you everything that's required for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. Knowledge of Him. Could this be revelation knowledge? Absolutely. Because you weren't born with that, God's giving you that to you. Through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Verse 4, by these he has given us very great and precious promises, so that through them, through them, what are we talking about? Very great and precious promises. Through them, great, great and precious promises, so that through them you may share in the divine nature. Whose divine nature? That would be God. Escaping the corruption of the world because of evil desire. Now, didn't we just read of the corruption of the world? These last days, we looked at that. We saw 